Hello and welcome to Property Matters here on Dublin South FM. You can contact the show on Twitter, Facebook or LinkedIn at iProperty Radio or email hello at iPropertyRadio.com. Your host for today is myself, Carol Tallon, and I'm delighted to be joined by Damien Brown of Standard Access. Uh, Standard Access are the creators of the Digital Spine Operating System for Smart Buildings. Damien, you're very welcome back to the show. It's been a while since we joined you from your office in Dingle. How have the last six months been for the Standard Access team? Hi, Carol. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for having us on again. Um, yeah, like like every business has been um, been challenging, but uh, we we were always a, re- a remote team anyway, so it didn't really affect us that much from a, from a work point of view. And we've always been coll- collaborating online, so um, uh, it's 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 you know it's a challenging time, but we're looking forward to the end of this uh, this period later on this year. Yeah, I, I don't doubt that. Um, so since we spoke last, um, I saw in the uh, in the newspapers that. Standard Access had a big win and a hard fought win. So congratulations. Um, just around Christmas time there, the company won, uh, well, secured a US patent. Um, you might just explain to us what that is and why it's significant. And was it worth spending five years battling to get that that uh, patent? Yeah, it was a long battle. Um, it, w- it was tedious and it was uh, time consuming, but uh, in the end, it was worth it. Was worth doing it. Um, we we applied in two thousand and fifteen, and it took actually took the full five years for it coming through. And normally, those things take, only take about two years. But uh, we, we got a patent on what's called monetized time restricted access. So that means using your phone to book a space, pay for it, and using that phone to to, to access through the door. Using um, we, we developed. Uh, or intellectual property around um, encrypted so- audio sound on your phone. And, Very good. Um, so is, is, what would be the use cases of that? Where would we see that in operation? So, you know, you ever, you've seen the, ad, the advent of um, co-working and flex operators around the world. Uh, WeWork would be the big name. Um, so the ability to, um, to book and pay in reserve space um, pay as you go. And use it when you want to use it, and uh, and this we we went a little step further in, in, in introducing the key as well and security around that. So it's like book, pay, reserve, have your key, and walk through the door. And um, Damien, I'm marveling at the foresight here because back in 2015, the conversation around flex space wasn't quite as um, robust as it is now, and certainly the need wasn't as as um, strong as it is now, particularly in light of uh, the pandemic. So, what what led you to that back in twenty in twenty fifteen? Well, what was um, your background? I was in commercial real estate all my life, so I was buying and selling investments in Ireland, the UK, and, and a little bit in Europe. Uh, so, managing tenants, um, uh, getting lease assigned, uh, maintenance uh, engineers, uh, carrier repairs, and some small developments as well. Of course, the recession came uh, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, and um, just trying to cut costs left, right, and center, and just looking at trying to look objectively at the whole uh, uh, portfolio and managing portfolios and facilities management. And when I was looking objectively, I was like, okay, this is completely insane because we're repeating the same things in every site and uh, we're not using technology. So I was like, okay, this is burning a hole in my pocket. I'm going to do something about it. And it took me a couple of years, but I eventually got the light bulb moment in 2013 that um, I could maybe use technology to sell space, rent out space and utilities um, using mobile phones and, and laptops. Uh, so it came from, from, from a, a hole in my pocket, really. So it's like, a, it's like someone said to me, it's a practitioner-led solution. Yeah, yeah. And, and look, we know that that's generally what drives early stage innovation. Now, um, so it, congratulations again on securing the patent. It's um, it's a huge deal and, and it's a massive achievement. So well done to all the team. Um, but in Ireland uh, and certainly in Ireland and the UK, your team would probably be best known for creating the digital spine solution for smart buildings. So um, this is one of the things that actually we've referenced on the show before because every week we try to meet uh, prop tech startups at, at different stages of startup, and they're generally working through um, you know, it, through um, the installation of IoT devices, so sensors, and then they're feeding data back in. And then, you know, we, we've talked at length about the importance of using that data and understanding it um, and having it uh, intelligently um, supporting decision making. But one of the areas that we haven't covered a lot are all the points of vulnerability that that then opens up and how vulnerable 
that smart building becomes and the data it's that that's the the transmission of the data between all of these sensors um and uh, is is it fair to say that that conversation just wasn't maybe it was happening but it certainly wasn't very loud you know um a, about the security of data now that these buildings are being fitted with all these iot devices so will you explain what the digital spine operating system does and why it's important sure um well first and foremost our, our two core values would be on data privacy and the secure data transmission and the security of people using the buildings we put our technology into so uh, even back in first day 2015, I wanted to not alone um, to monetize space and the access control, I also wanted to be able to build people for telecoms and air conditioning, heating, lighting, uh, usage of everything in the building. But at, at, unfortunately, the, the technology wasn't there and I didn't have the resource to do that either. So I just concentrated on the uh, access control. Um, 2020, um, we started... Uh, reevaluate everything because of the COVID. So um, we thought, okay, can we, can, can we do this now? Can we bring a system into a building that can connect to all the different siloed uh, bits of information? So you have HVAC, you could have elevators, you could have um, access control, security, CCTV, compliance hardware, software, uh, tenant apps, um, landlord apps, um, and they're all siloed bits of information using different protocols to give you information on the dashboards. So um, it's a bit insane to, to expect landlords to adapt all these technologies and, um, and to pay their staff to use them. So <clears throat> we wanted to, uh, you know, as well as that, then you, you've the IoT sensors for water flow and, and monitoring electricity usage and stuff like that. And all these devices that are going into buildings, not all of them, but a lot of them would have a, a lot of security vulnerabilities in the systems. So somebody could actually hack into your building. And it has happened in America last year. Uh, not publicized well, but it will happen this year in London or New York or some famous building. The hackers, just for the hell of it, are going to go in and they're going to shut it down. They're going to turn off the lights. They're going to stop the elevator. They're going to unlock the doors. They're going to switch off the air conditioning, which is going to become a major news uh, item, unfortunately, because of COVID. And um, so we uh, obviously been aware ourselves about, about secure data transmission. We thought, OK, you know, can we help our clients uh, adapt technology faster be securing the knowledge that the data that's been generated and the vulnerabilities, um, uh, you know, ha have been secured and 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 in, uh, disabled. So, you know, looking at all these different these different data sets and all these different protocols, how do you do that? But while we do that, and what we're doing is we're building, uh, if you want to call it a black box for a building, that will connect to all the different uh, technologies and use in the building and convert all those protocols into one singular protocol. Uh, so the user will have one dashboard. And on that dashboard, they can select by room or by floor or by building, and they can see the usage by individual or by, 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 by for the movement of people, the consumption of electricity, heating, lighting, um, and all. You know, are, the, are, 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 are is everything being compliant? Are we up to date and everything in real time? And then go check, go check back in a couple, maybe a year back in time as well. But all that data, then once we've collected it. And we secured, we're securing all the data being transmitted in the building. Um, then we start to uh, apply machine learning and artificial intelligence algorithms to make sense and identify the valuable data and give it back to the user and say, listen, you know, here's the data. You know, these actions can be, take, can be done now autonomously and reduce down your amount of labor and people we have managing your, your buildings. Um, you know, and that data is, is quite valuable to people. But at the moment, it's, it's just, it's all over the place. It's disparate. And... Um, so that's where the digital spine came from. Basically, a digital twin. So in construction, you have digital twins for construction. This is a digital twin for operations. And um, it's, a, it's an operating system for, for a building. So think of like a, a phone. A phone has a, an app store and you can go and buy whatever services you want through the app store. This is like a black box phone, if you want to call it, for a building, for a real estate building. And then you can choose from all the different technology you want to plug into it. So... Yeah, um, Damien. Excuse me, Damien. I'm. I, do you know, I'm aware that um, if we were having this conversation 15 months ago or 12 months ago, even perhaps the conversation would have been uh, very much geared towards sustainability. So, um, so let let's just discuss that before uh, before we move on in terms of sustainability. Um, so, I, I am I right in assuming that your system can. Um, you know, track the energy performance of 
the building um, in order to, I, I know that your company is specialist in artificial intelligence. So is that how that's being used to prompt energy efficiencies, to prompt actions? Of course, yeah, um, uh, and uh, we're, we we build our hardware agnostic as well, so we're open to other vendors. Uh, uh, they might have a fantastic HVAC product that might already be a vendor to a to a potential client of ours. That is, hey, you can still use that system. We don't mind. We'll just plug it into ours and and plug in the CCTV and plug in the access control and plug in the tenant apps and the, and the landlord apps and put it, just put all the data into one place and make it make it very secure. Um, but yeah, it, the, the the HVAC systems that we that that companies are developing and uh, putting into buildings, they can save you a lot of money on heating and on lighting, but more importantly, reducing your emissions. Because, and you know, I think uh, we've reached almost an inflection point in the last 12 months um, where companies are finally deciding, okay, we need to adopt technology because uh, we want to make people feel safe coming back into buildings, you know, just from the health of the building, the air and, um, you know, and as well as that, um, you can see the right. We've all seen the rise of the green type funding in the world now. With, with banks are saying, "Well, how healthy is your building? Um, how efficient is it? Um, are you going to make it more efficient if it's a small building?" And with our technology, we can help people do that because when they want to sell that product in eight years' time, or ten years' time, or twelve years' time, the people who are going to buy that product, they might not be allowed by it. They might be able to get finance for it in ten years' time when it becomes across the board. That you know, your building has to be at a certain level before they get finance to come and buy your product. So you want to enable the yield to stay high, you've got to invest now. And, um, you know, it, it's uh, t- thankfully it's starting to happen now. Yeah, you know, it's interesting there, you know, you you likened this almost to the digital digital twin that the construction industry would be well familiar with. And in fact, you know, we've, we've spoken at length about how, um, you know, by delivering a digital twin, the contractor is actually handing over two valuable assets, one a real asset, one a digital asset, and but they both have value. Uh, and, you know, are we are we at a stage where even for leases on commercial buildings, you're going to be handing over what is effectively a digital twin with a health check, you know, with a with a health record. Um, so almost like we do with our cars, as in a, a service history with our cars. So you can tell what the performance has been. Um, you know what the what the uh, energy performance, particularly, has been in terms of emissions, carbon footprint, and how that's going to impact on the sustainability goals of the particular company. Yeah, hundred percent. I think within four or five years, I think um, if you don't have that information digitally available, um, people won't won't buy your building because there's too much risk involved, and they don't want the hassle of it. They'll expect you to do it. They'll expect you to invest in technology. They'll expect you to absorb that cost because. Um, you know, they, they don't want, if you're not doing it, why aren't you doing it? And um, so, um, you know, it, 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 I think it'll become commonplace with it quicker than, than we think. And um, like the digital information will be available in real time to the, to the operators. And, um, you know, the banks who are going to fund the next buyer that building will say, well, well, show us the data. And you say, okay, here's, here's, your, here's the, the way into the, into the platform. Here's your keys, your cryptographic keys go and knock yourself out and check out all the data for the last 10 years or 12 years or whatever it is. So it can be done in all buildings as well. Um, yeah, as well and as you can builds. see... You can see how that would impact on the value as well. So obviously, the more information, uh, the more valuable it is, but also the more information, then that should be prompting the right action as well. Yeah. Um, David, for your own team, when when does the standard access team get involved in projects? At any stage, Carl, uh, we do a lot of retrofits um, and um, and we do new buildings as well. Ideally, at design stage, we'd like to sit down with the architects and the surveyors and uh, understand the requirements of, for, of their client and um, maybe give them a recommendation of what technology to use. Um, we can say, look, uh, we, we recommend a list of vendors for that, for that type of uh, access control or CCTV or HVAC um, and tenant apps are, you know, if you want, we can, uh, we can customize this for you and we can white label, we can brand it to, to meet your requirements and, and something that will stand the test of time because um, you, know, you want this to be there. Uh, it, when people buy technology, the biggest fear is, will it be redundant in 12, 12 months' time or 24 months' time? So what we're doing is we're, 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 getting, we're eliminating the redundancy risk for people saying, okay, if you want to change the access control in three years' time from that vendor to another vendor, no problem, just plug it out and plug in the new one. So that's what the, what the digital spine operating system is about. It's making it interoperable and, um, and, and not being confined to having to buy everything off us. You can buy off wherever you want. Um, it, you know, so. 
Yeah, you know, a lot of these things, you know, we've been discussing it, um, you know, through the show for for close to three years. But, um, you know, I, and one of the things I've seen is that there's um, prior to the digital spine um, operating system, there was a lot of separate things going on that didn't work well together. And in fact, you know, we see that across construction tech. We see it across residential prop tech as well. In fact, it's something that, you know, has really been identified as a, as a problem and also almost a point of resistance um, in, in terms of adoption, but also allowing the sector to grow. So I, I'm always aware that I'm coming at this maybe from a different place than maybe commercial property operators who, you know, this has been on the radar for a while, but they haven't taken steps towards it. Maybe, you know, they've brought in something to measure energy performance efficiencies or something, but, you know, they haven't really gotten started. So, you know, this is, this is a big question. I hope it's not an unfair question, but I mean, what kind of advice can you give to, to uh, commercial landlords, um, but also to the construction, um, to the construction industry who need to be familiar with this? Um, but what kind of advice can you give for, for professionals really just embarking on delivering smart buildings? Um, uh, reach out to the, to the prop tech, the property, the prop tech community in Ireland and UK, I suppose, um, you know, um, and uh, maybe attend some webinars, get familiar, so was familiar, familiarize yourself with technology and, um, you know, go and talk to people who are using technology already. Go and talk to some of the, some of the, the people who are taking lead in this area and um and see you know what's the best device you know are, is that type of access control good is that type of cctv good is that a is that a good system was it easy to adopt was it easy to integrate uh you know so that's one thing we do is uh if you already have technology in a building we'll integrate it with that technology with that building management system um so um you, you know like i said you don't have to buy everything from scratch again um, Very good. Well, I'm going to I'm going to add one one thing to that piece of advice, and that is to go onto your website because actually I find myself um, being referred to your website actually whenever we look at issues of or we're googling issues of uh, security or IoT. Um, so I know standard access has become kind of the the uh, the place for guidance um, for IoT and artificial intelligence and, and indeed securing smart buildings, um, not just in Europe, but globally. So, um, you know, it's something that that through PropTech Ireland makes us incredibly proud of your team, you know, that that you're really pioneering um, globally. So best of luck to the team and continued success. Um, again, thank you so much for joining me today. That was Damien Brown of Standard Access creators of the digital spine operating system for smart buildings. We need to take a quick break. Stay tuned.